welcome back to the life of a virtual cargo pilot. I'm your host, as always, Captain Mac, and today we're going to be doing something just a little bit different. Um, well, it's not really different. It's something that National actually does regularly. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, the real world National uh, Airlines, cargo airlines, um, when there's disasters and stuff like that around the world, uh, they're often chartered to bring in uh, supplies for rescue, um, things, you know, water, food, um, medical supplies, personnel to help in search and rescue and things like that. And it's no different for National Virtual. And recently, many of you may be aware, uh, just the other day in fact, there was a massive earthquake in Ecuador. And um, currently, and I have to, I want to look at my stats here and make sure that I get it right, at least 272 people have died and more than 2,500 people have been injured and they're still looking for people. And of course this is, uh, it's, it's terrible. I mean, I don't know anybody down there or anything like that, but I mean, just imagine if that was taking place where you're at right now and if for some reason uh, you're in the, uh, somewhere in Ecuador or near Ecuador, or uh, any of the South American countries in that general vicinity and you're watching this I hope that all is well with you and um, that you haven't been uh, affected adversely by this this uh, what tragedy because that's really what it is and it's not the first time it's happened uh, here or you know anywhere for that matter these kind of things do happen all around the world um, but for our flight today we will be conducting uh, an emergency um, aid flight to Quito, Ecuador, which is right here. Which, from the point from the point of view uh, for flight simulation, it's a, it's a great little flight. You know, flying into Quito is really a, a it's quite a challenge. We're going to be flying it in a 747, which adds to that challenge. Uh, and we're flying into the new Quito airport today, which is actually, in my opinion, more difficult than the old one. But I just wanted to take a moment at the start of this video and. Uh, just let everybody know that my thoughts and prayers go out to all the people in uh, Ecuador who are affected by this and um, if you're one of those I, I hope that you're doing well and uh, I don't really know what else to say about that except that uh, you know it always it always saddens me it, it certainly uh, saddens my heart to know that so many people are suffering because of something that you know you can't do anything about it earthquakes happen so all of that being said, um, <clears throat> we're going to try and stay as upbeat as we can during the course of this recording. Um, that's just how we do things, but uh, don't think for a moment during this recording that, um, that, I th that I'm downplaying or that I think for a moment what's happened down in Ecuador is, is uh, no big deal or something like that. This is a terrible thing, and uh, obviously there's nothing I can do directly. Um, I don't have the means, the finances, or the capability to go down there and help. Um, I'm I'm certain that if I did, I probably would actually. I, you know, I I hate tragedies like this, but there's nothing I can really do except uh, offer up my prayers, and I'll continue to do that. And I would ask that uh, that you folks do as well. But in the meantime, we're going to go ahead and press on with what we do here, and that is uh, the life of a virtual cargo pilot series. So you can see that I do have a bunch of flights on here. Uh, if you are not aware, unlike the life of a virtual airline pilot series. I do not. Uh, I do not do every single flight with uh, National Virtual on screen. I do a lot of flights uh, just for fun as well. I very much enjoy flying for this uh, for this airline. Fantastic! It's a lot of fun. Great group of guys there. Uh, David uh, David is the president. He's done a fantastic job. Don is his second in command, and he's really uh, brought things along as well. And just all the guys at National are just doing an awesome job. And I really enjoy flying for this airline. I think they've done a great job putting it together. And um, you know, so I spend some extra time flying on here off screen. And I do the same thing with um, with uh, PVA as well. And if you don't know, I actually have two profiles over there. So while the life of a virtual airline pilot series, I fly every flight. Uh, on screen in that one, I there are, I'm a executive captain too with them right now for my regular profile. So I do lots of flights with them otherwise as well. So I just don't I don't have two profiles with National Virtual. So even though I have 16 flights completed, you guys have only seen four up to this point, and this will be number five. So you can see that I've already put some flights in there that I plan on flying later. These are some of the CRAF flights uh, where 
we move uh, cargo and other goods for the virtual US Air Force I've explained that before and I'm sure I'll explain it again in the future but this is the flight we're looking for today NCR-E-010 which is uh, Sanford International which is in Orlando that's uh, Nationals primary hub down to SEQM which is the new Mariscal I think it's called what's it called Ecuador Quito Mariscal Sucre I think international uh, it used to be SEQU I believe which was the old Quito airport so um, I will try to remember I always forget so don't count on it but there is some freeware scenery for uh, SEQM that you can load into your FSX I'm not sure if it's compatible with P3D or not and that'll make sure that you're landing at the proper airport that being said somebody recently released a really good look it looks fantastic from the videos I've seen anyway a beautiful looking payware version uh, I think it's called approaching keto or something like that now I, I don't even remember who who released it and I often don't put company names on here anyway I'm, I'm not in the business of endorsing companies but um, I will tell you this you'll see when we fly in there I'm gonna, somebody mentioned recently oh you should do some flights that start at night or something like that and I will um, if I can find the right circumstances we'll do some flights that include night because obviously most cargo flights take place at night but in this case I really want you to be able to see this scenery so um, I'm going to fly it during the daylight because whoever did this freeware scenery did a fantastic job. And if I remember, I will certainly uh, put a link down below. That being said, also, take a look at uh, Sanford while we're there. I'll try to remember to show you around a little bit because that's going to be changing soon. There is a freeware scenery available for that. But the uh, president for National Virtual has uh, been working with whoever created that scenery, and he's going to actually put in some uh, national hangars and stuff like that out there. So once he's done that, I'm going to go ahead and load that one, and I'm actually really looking forward to that. So if you're a member of National Virtual, you can uh, just hop right on over here, this guy right here, and go to View Airport Downloads. And there's Orlando uh, Sanford International right there and uh, that one's FS2004 here's the FSX so this one's gonna be changing soon so I haven't loaded it yet I probably should have but I haven't but um, once it's got the national hangers and stuff in there I'll be loading that in as well so look for that as a change in the meantime that's our flight for today so let's take a quick look at our brief here it is uh, let's see KSFB down to Mariscal Sucre I think it's Sucre maybe I'm saying that wrong if I am let me know uh, international SEQM we can always click the view no TAMs not found um, maybe that just means there aren't any maybe the link broke yeah it said the links outdated so that's something uh, I know that David watches all of these so David uh, it looks like maybe the links broke here not sure why that is but uh, there you go and uh, I know David will take care of that so we're not gonna grab weather from here not worried about that we'll use active sky 2012 as always uh, we don't have to follow this route we're gonna follow the route that we pulled from PFPX and that's pretty much it we don't need their charts we do have charts uh, for both airports and in fact I do have Lido charts for SEQM so that's awesome and you're gonna see when we brief the approach it's it's a tight one. It's it's going to be interesting. So all of that being said, we're done here. We're done on the website. Why don't we hop on into the sim? Let's get eight cars fired up and let's get this flight going. All right. So the first thing we have to do, obviously, is take care of our A cars. Last uh, virtual airline pilot video I did, I forgot to do A cars at the end of the flight. Big surprise there. I seem to forget it a lot. Nonetheless, here we are. That's us, Captain Mac, or me in any case. Uh, when you're on your pilot center here, it gives you your total hours, total flights, and your average landing rate. So that's good. We can view Pyreps from here if we want. We're not going to do that. Jump down to flights. Those are all the same flights you saw in my bid list on the website. This is the one we're looking for right here. So we're going to click on that and click fly. Now, I had a couple of issues. <coughs> There's that cough in your face. My apologies. I had a couple of issues with the uh, load on one of the flights. Um, and it turns out that uh, that flight was accidentally put in as like a passenger flight. And that's why I couldn't get the load in there. So I have scheduled the aircraft to be loaded with 268,290 uh, pounds of cargo. Here's the catch though, watch this. So, um, actually no, I'm not even going to do it because as soon as I press a button it's going to change views on me. Here's what I'm going to do. It, long story short, it won't, for whatever reason it says 268,290 is too much. 
So what we're going to do is generate load 235, 351. We're looking for the highest load we get because we want to take as much supplies down there as we can. 240, 278. 241068. We're probably not going to get much higher than that, so that's what we're going to go with. I don't know why it insists uh, every. I've done this flight actually a few times. Uh, every time I fly it, it insists on putting it at an odd number, but it should be an even uh, thousand. And see, there you go. So it jumped to the overhead when I did that, uh, which I was trying to avoid. But there you go. It is what it is. So uh, there's our A cars. We got it set up 34,000. So we go ahead and click on start. There we go. We're in pre-flight right now we can shrink that down out of the way and then obviously we're already in the aircraft but I'd like to hop outside for a second and the reason I wanted to hop out here is because I continue to do the little graphic you see popping up there right now and I want to make sure you get an opportunity to see that and of course doing that from inside the flight deck I don't know it just seems kind of silly so while that's going we'll just raise up here a little bit you can see this is clearly an Allegiant hub uh, so we're kind of invading their space here they got all the little guys over there I don't think a legion even owns a 747 or even leases one they have their um, I think they're actually a regional airline I'm not sure I don't know much about a legion but there you go so um, keep it uh, uh, well not keep an eye but just take a look at what we got here I said I'd look around so this is the default scenery for Orlando in FSX so there you have it that's the default scenery all the way around and we're gonna hop in the aircraft here now but that's the default. So once I load the um, once I load the add-on in there, I'll be sure to uh, pan that around and show you what that looks like as well. So, but in the meantime, we're going to use the default, and that's the way it is. So let me go ahead and send uh, my fuel load over here. That's the little ding in you here going on off to the side there. Fuel load should be in there now, which means we can jump right into our checklist. Oh, th that reminds me. Let me just move this out of the way. This is where you load your fuel. I've shown this to you before, but there it is. There's the load manager. Um, what's his name? Something Moose. I don't know. Some guy with the name Moose in his name. <laughs> I'm bad with names, guys. He's one of my subscribers. He put on. He put a post on there on how we can change it so that I can um, load as cargo instead of packs. Uh, that's why you see single class here, but it's actually cargo in there. So Moose, thank you for taking the time to write out that post. I used it, and you know what? It works fantastic. So um, thank you. I appreciate it. All right, enough about that. Let's move on now, and let's go ahead and take care of our checklist here, starting with... Uh, this is, a, I guess, counts as the power-up checklist, right? So starting out with load and fuel plans done, flight plans done... We are cold and dark. We need to make sure the parking brake is set, which I believe it is. There it is. Uh, what else? Nothing else really on there, which means we can roll right into the actual power-up checklist, which starts with the battery. When you click on this guy, it automatically closes this for you. Uh, standby power needs to go to auto, which it is. Uh, bus tie switches on auto. That's all of these guys right here. Uh, generator control switches all on. That's them right there, even though it shows off. Uh, hydraulic demand pumps one through three all need to be off. That's these three, and then the auxiliary needs, or number four needs to be on auxiliary, and the engine hydraulic pump selectors all need to be on. That's these guys right here. External power switches one and two on if available. They are not. Uh, and next would be panel lights. So what we want to do actually is we're going to go ahead and fire up the APU next, and that's a very simple process. Right click it twice, and on she goes. And what it's going to do is it's going to start spinning up. And once it's got enough power in it, uh, or once, not enough power, once it's running, it'll tell us we can turn on APU generators 1 and 2, and then we'll have power to the aircraft because we're not using ground power. So while it's doing that, we want to check our panel lights. We don't need any panel lights right now. Uh, let's see, electric, excuse me. <coughs> I don't know why I'm coughing. Electric engine control switches. It says normal and saved. I don't know what saved means, but I'm assuming that that's normal. Uh, utility power left and right both need to be on. They are. Uh, lights, nav, logo, and wing lights all need to come on. So there's nav, there's wing, and there's logo. And then emergency lights need to be armed. That's these up here. The middle is armed. That's on. That's off. That's armed. And all you do is left click those and then right click the uh, cover there and you're good to go. And what does that take us to? That takes us to the IRS switches, which I've already turned off. And that's perfect timing actually APU generator 1 APU generator 2 both coming on 
and now we can take care of our IRS alignment. So we're going to right click them once from the off position, takes them all the way to nav. Let them sit there for a second, then left click them to align. Hop down here to your FMC, click on FMC, position initialization, and somebody pointed this out to me. Instead of going to the next page and grabbing this here, you can just grab this GPS position right here, plug it in right there, and you're good to go. Once you've done that, back up top, right click them once to nav, and the, no, nope, there we go, and the alignment process shall begin, which takes, uh, I think I've got it set to, it's like 10 minutes or something, but we usually spend most of that time jabbering in here anyway, so we might as well let it take its time to align properly, right? All right, next is going to be the fuel pumps. We're not going to do anything with those. We're going to leave them as they are. Fuel cross feeds, we'll leave those as they are as well. We get a notification when we need to change them anyway. Nacelle anti-ice, that's this little setup right here. Those all need to be off, but window heat needs to be, it says enable, it needs to be on. <laughs> that's enabled, in case you're wondering. Yaw dampers need to be on, they're up here. Of course, they are inoperable right now because there's no hydraulic power to them. APU has already been started and Gens 1 and 2 are on. Passenger and flight deck temperature control both need to be on auto. That's these two over here. And again, this, this bounces around a little bit, which is kind of weird, but it is what it is. Uh, trim air needs to be on. It is. Upper and lower recirc needs to be on. Recirculation fans. The gasper needs to be on. I don't know what gasper is. Gasper the friendly ghost? I think we've said that before, haven't we? Pack switches 1 through 3 all need to be normal, which they are. Left and right isolation switches need to be open. That's like this right here. And then the APU bleed needs to be on, and the engine bleeds need to be on. That's all of these right here. So, now we get to go to the FMC and take care of inputting our flight plan. So we click on route, and instead of typing in origin and destination, which you can do, you can type in the origin, um, but we don't need to. We're just going to go straight to company route, and it's going to be KSFB FB to SEQM and the designator is 01. Put that right here in company route. It's going to find it. It's good to go. Click on activate. Execute. Give it a second to calculate everything. And bam, there it is. So we can roll right into our performance initialization. Zero fuel weight. We just click on it and there it is. And I'm going to tell you right now, it's wrong. The max zero fuel weight is 635,000 pounds on this aircraft. But every time I do this, it shows it's 664. Not sure why that is, because the planner, in fact, let me just drag it over here. The planner shows our zero fuel weight at 634,976, and the FMC says it's 664.5. So it's incorrect, but it hasn't caused any problems, so I'm just going to leave it as is. Now remember, 24,000 pounds of unusable fuel. Somebody asked me recently, they said, why would you have so much unusable fuel? That doesn't make any sense. Okay. They did, it's not intentional. It's fuel that, uh, you, you know, there's fuel bladders in there and you get little, you know, wrinkles in them and pooled fuel and stuff like that. And for an aircraft as large as a 747, 24,000 pounds of unusable fuel, not really that, it's, it's not that much. <laughs> Believe it or not, it's not that much. I mean, this thing will hold 240,000 pounds of fuel. So 24,000 pounds is, what, 10%, right? and that's about the average for any aircraft so if you go all the way down to Cessna 172 and I do not remember off the top of my head the max fuel of that I believe it's about 40 pounds uh, or 40 gallons which would be um, 240 pounds and the unusable fuel in that is about 24 pounds give or take just a little bit remember it's six pounds per gallon of fuel six pounds per gallon alright so anyway talked about that long enough there is 24,000 pounds of unusable fuel in this aircraft. I did talk with David. I had a chance uh, to speak with him on TeamSpeak, which was fantastic. David is an awesome guy. And uh, he told me, because uh, I had asked in my last video if the iFly version of the 747 simulated the uh, proper unusable fuel as well. And he said it does, in fact. If you get to 24,000 pounds of fuel in the iFly or the PMDG 747, you have run out of fuel and your engines will quit. So just something to keep in mind. Uh, okay, let's move on. So reserves, 24,000 pound being our unusable with our reserves, we have to take that into account because the weight is still there. So I typically go with 40,000 pounds 
and that's usually pretty good. You could go 44, and sometimes it'll start telling me right away uh, insufficient fuel. That just means that your flight uh, is probably going to put you below that reserve level, so something to keep in mind. I always use 75 as the cost index. I've never been told that's wrong, so there we go. And we're going to start out at flight level 340. I've been talking a lot on this one, haven't I? Let's move to our thrust limit. The runways aren't that long here, and we are definitely heavy today, so we're going to go with maximum thrust for our takeoff, and we're going to go with flaps 20. Now, I know you, you can do flaps 10 or 20. I want to do flaps 20 because it's going to give me more bang for my buck as far as lift is concerned, but keep in mind, it's also going to give you more drag, which means you need more thrust in order to get going. So, just something to remember. More flaps may equal more lift, but it also equals more drag. Uh, if you click on the CG button here, it's going to tell you what your trim needs to be, and it's 6.0, so if we just hop back here, push my little button for trim until we get up to right about yeah that's about right six and we're good to go there and now we need to take care of our departure click on departure and arrival it's going to be SFB5 and we are taking this will go silent here for a sec I'm just double checking my stuff over here we are taking runway nine left today based on the wind I think I um, I think I mentioned it in the taxi brief but the wind is 080 at seven knots and gusting to 18 7 knots gusting to 18, which is going to make for probably an exciting departure. So click on 9 left, hit execute, we're good to go, and then we just cycle back through, make sure everything's done. Uh, you can look at uh, page 2 here, SFB, then it's vectors, and then on from there. If we look at our legs, we see it's vectors, then to ORL. Remember, and I don't know if this is how it is in the real world, I would imagine it is, Vector simply means we are under ATC control, which we won't be, of course. So once we get airborne and we're ready to start making our turn, uh, or even after we make our turn, we need to come in here, we need to click on ORL and replace the vectors with ORL and execute that in order for the LNAV to work properly. Okay? So thrust limitations, we're good. Our, uh, not thrust limitations, but uh, we're, we're good on our performance initialization. We're going to go with max thrust. We've got all this set up, but we haven't put in our V-refs yet. 149, 164 is our rotation speed, and 176 is our V2. Boy, that's going to be... Whew, we're going to be working today. Let's click this one over to FMC, and if I click on progress, it's going to tell me that I should be around 47 and change give or take a little once we arrive that'll change as we go along because it continues to uh, calculate that we can put the reference airport in here that's what I was talking about earlier KSFB there we go and that just helps the IRS in its alignment so we're gonna go on all that so let's hop up here go back to the checklist really quick nothing on there that we need to do we do need to take care of our TCAS test real quick and you can see that and I'll click it up for you we got about three minutes to alignment, but we have a few things we need to do yet. If you left click this once, it's conducting a TCAS test now. TCAS system test okay. And there we go. Hit cancel to get rid of some of those uh, announcements there. Altimeters need to be set, which is 3010 currently. And for whatever reason, and again, I, I'll click these up for you so that you can see them, but if I scroll on this, doesn't matter which way I scroll, it goes down. So you need to right-click it in order to go up, and we said it was 3010. So pretty high pressure. Left-click it, it goes down. Put that back down, and you need to set them on both sides. Okay, so I'll scroll this one up to 3010. There it is. Okay, both of those are set. Flight directors need to be brought on. 1 and 2. Auto throttle needs to be brought on. LNAV and VNAV need to be armed. Now right now I'm just doing this as a flow. I'm not actually looking at the checklist. So if I say it again in a few minutes, it's because I'm doing a flow right now. Now this may not be the actual flow. This is just how I remember it and so this is how I flow through it. We said we're going up to flight level 340. It does take a minute to crank this thing up. Um, I guess that's a good thing and a bad thing. It's uh, a lot harder to overshoot your altitude but it does take a minute to get there. So there we go, and then I like to set this to 240. That's going to change uh, as we get ready to depart, but that's where I'm going to set it anyway. So 240. All right. So let's go back to the checklist. LNAV and VNAV are both armed. First altitude is set. Well, we don't have an altitude restriction, so it's straight to 340 for us. Autopilot disengage bar is up, which it is. What are we at here? One minute. Let me pause for a second here. When we hit one minute is when I do... Um, ground handling. Let's see what a Legionnaire does. When I did it with Swiss Port, they put this little tiny push. Yes, this little tiny, that thing is not pushing this. Okay, nose needs to go to the right, tail needs to go to the left. 
I'll start engines after pushback. We'll let him start doing his thing. I'm telling you right now, there is no way that little tiny truck is going to push this 747 when it's loaded like this. But whatever. Moving on. Fuel control switches. Um, it says they have them all in cutoff, but we're just going to put them all on here in a minute anyway. So I'm just going to leave them on. Trim settings are good. Auto brake needs to go to RTO. And you may have noticed, okay, the alignment is complete. That's why this changed. Um... TCAS switch has already been tested, so we're good there. Needs to go to TARA, which I think is a little weird. I don't think you're really supposed to do that with the guys getting ready to push, but whatever, we'll do it. TARA and the biasing needs to be above. So left click it once, and it puts the biasing above, and then once we're at cruise, we should put it at neutral, and descent, we go below. Uh, no smoking and seatbelts need to be on, and flight deck door needs to be locked. Push the traffic button on the IFAS. There we go. That lets us know if there's any traffic nearby that's right over the top of us. And we can actually open this up a little bit and see. So you can see we're going to take runway 9 left, which is going this way. The reverse of the way we're pointed right now, basically. And uh, so once we take off, uh, and, and I've, I'll brief it in the uh, departure briefing, but uh, we're going to... I, well, now I already recorded the departure briefing. I think I said a left turn, but actually we're going to be making a right turn. So departure we'll make a right turn to intercept. Brake. You gotta wait till he's done talking when he says release parking brakes, because if you if you release him before he's finished with that sentence, the next sentence automatically kicks in, and so he, it's him talking twice at once. Kind of weird. All right, fuel button. We're supposed to press the fuel button on here, so there we go. That tells us what's going on with our fuel. Fuel pumps are all supposed to be on. Cross feeds are good, which means we're actually ready for the startup. So, startup procedure is very simple. We're going to start with engines one and four. Left click, left click. It's an auto. Oh, there is one thing I forgot, and I don't know if I bypassed it or if I just if it's not on there. But you want continuous ignition on and auto start on. Uh, that's where we're at. Go right there. So you can see already engines 1 and 4 are starting to spin up. I'll let them do that for a second while I turn the page in my checklist here. And they're taking their time. That's alright though. Oh, there's one thing I forgot to do. I'm going to do it. You can watch too because I almost always forget this. We want to make sure we record this so that we can get our cinematics later. I forget that so often. It's driving me nuts. I want to make sure we record AI traffic too. So now we're recording with FS Recorder so I can get my cinematics later. Just waiting for that N1 to come up and stabilize. Uh, you may have just heard the two clicks from the uh, uh, starter turn or clicking off there. So we're good on those. So we'll just let it stabilize here. It's usually right around 25 or 26. There's 26 right there. I think we're good. So we can go engines 2 and 3 now. Rotate up there, 2 and 3. And again, everything's automatic at this point. You can do this without using the auto ignition, uh, but why bother? <laughs> I mean, I guess if you wanted to, but I, if the auto ignition is there, I, I would, excuse me, I have to just figure use it. I got hiccups all of a sudden. I need a drink. That's what I need. Not alcohol, people. Just a drink of water. You guys kill me. I know somebody was thinking it too. I know you were. So, <laughs> uh, okay, you can see we're getting pushed back here. Uh, just about done, actually. I think our timing is going to be pretty good on this. <coughs> so let's just get this uh, engine start wrapped up. And uh, our, we'll go into our after start checklist here in a second. Okay, both of those have clicked off. I'll just let the engine stabilize here. I don't see that flag moving much. The wind's not gusting that bad right now. I don't know if it really moves all that much or not in FSX. I've never watched it. Okay, dude. We, we're, we're there. <laughs> uh, let him finish for a second. There we go. Okay, let him do his thing. Engines are stabilized, so we're going to need to turn the APU off at this point. I think before I had mentioned the generators, they're already off. They turn off automatically. So APU can go off, left click at once, and we're good on that. Uh, the hydraulic pumps 1, 2, and 3 all go to auto, and so does number 4. APU bleed goes off, and I think that's it. Let's take a look at our checklist. APU and APU bleed air off. Packs normal all.
Um, you know what? That I missed something. Where did I miss it at? I just want to look real quick. Uh, TKS. You're supposed to turn off. Um, where did I miss that at? You're supposed to turn off the bleeds. Or not the bleeds, the uh, packs. Packs 2 and 3 are supposed to be turned off. And I think 1 gets left on normal. Or, or it's the other way around. Yep. I messed up. I skipped a couple things on the checklist. And I messed up. So, yep. My my bad. You're supposed to uh, do a couple different things. I, I didn't go all the way down the checklist. My bad. Okay, moving on though. It didn't destroy anything. We're good to go. So packs are all normal now. Hydraulic demand pump switch 4 is on auto. Main uh, engine and wing anti-ice. They don't need to be on because the temperature doesn't warrant it. Main display. Check for warnings. We can hit cancel and then recall. No warnings, so we're good there. Uh, taxi lights need to come on. That's this one way over here. We need to set our flaps all the way down to 20. There it is. They'll take a second to get there anyway. And that completes our pushback. So let's put this back over to engine. Let's hop over here. And I'll be back in just a second and we'll get this uh, get this thing moving. Alright, so while I was uh, sitting here getting ready to finalize everything and make sure we were good to go, this Allegiant uh, airplane just uh, taxied right on through me. He didn't care. <laughs> so, okay. So let's go ahead and take care of our taxi checklist real quick and then we'll get going. Taxi clearance, we've already requested it. We know which taxiways we're taking. Uh, we don't need any ground guidance. Last thing to do is flight controls. We want to make sure they're free and correct. And if I remember correctly, it is the... Yep, the stats page. If you look down here, you can see full left, full right, neutral, full up, full down, neutral. Rudder is full left, full right and neutral and you could do that while you're taxiing however it helps to have two people to be able to do that right so that's it we're going to go ahead and start taxiing out here and we turn the track ir on you can see i've scooted it up a little bit for a little bit more of a realistic view we're still back quite far but uh trying to make it a little better i don't want to be like this because then i have to look way down to be able to see that and it just doesn't work for me so here we are let's go ahead and start uh, taxiing out here and while we're doing that we'll kick off the taxi brief and uh, the departure briefing all right we're over here at the southwest ramp so when we push back we'll turn our, uh, well when we pushed back we turned our nose to the right <clears throat> we're gonna follow this down we'll take uh, hop over here on to kilo down to Bravo and take that on down to nine left now uh, if you look on here just real quick you see this is X'd out and you should see it um, here in a second once we taxi down there you can taxi on this, but this is uh, this is not um, this has the yellow chevrons on it. I forget what you call it. It's not part of a displaced threshold. You can't even taxi on this on a displaced threshold, which is this right here. You can taxi and take off on it, uh, but you just can't land on it. On this with the yellow chevrons, you can't even taxi on it. it won't support the weight of the aircraft. So we're going to go down here to Bravo One. That's where we'll enter uh, for the takeoff. And if I didn't already mention it, the wind right now is 080 at 7 knots, gusting to 18 knots. So it should be an interesting takeoff. Uh, ATIS on 25, 125, 975, tower on 120.3. Uh, that's also CTAF, ground on 121.3, and delivery on 121.35. 2135 for both ground and delivery. Not that it matters, we're not using ATC. There's your taxi brief. <laughs> Let's go ahead and take care of the departure briefing. Departure out of uh, Sanford, out of Orlando Sanford International. I really have a hard time talking sometimes. <laughs> it's the Sanford 5 or SFB5. We're going to be taking runway 9, so it's all vectors. Uh, heading 0, 09 or 5 and uh, there's there is a text version with this but it doesn't have really doesn't have anything that makes any difference to us so basically it's vectors until uh, ATC says otherwise we're not using ATC so when we take off we'll simply make a turn it's going to be a left hand turn to intercept our uh, outbound course and then off we go so pretty simple departure briefing today right All right, holding short of runway nine left at this point, so let's go ahead and take care of our uh, takeoff or before takeoff checklist. 
Uh, let's see what we got here. Okay, landing lights need to come on, strobe light needs to come on, transponder on, and then position and hold on the runway. So landing lights, all of these. I missed a cut. I must have missed a couple things in the checklist because those beacon lights should have been on already as well. Uh, transponder is already on. We're at 1200. That's what we're going to go with. We're at T A R A. That's what they say to do on the checklist. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, so that's it until we do our um, takeoff checklist. I guess I don't even remember if there's an actual takeoff checklist. I mean, there is on here, but I don't think I made one for the video. So it'll be our after takeoff checklist. So let's go ahead and get going up here. Well, we're just a bit of a soup sandwich, aren't we? All right, bring those throttles up a bit. We're actually uh, not over the edge, even though it probably looks like it from here. Ooh, we got them up there, didn't we? We don't want to go too fast. See those chevrons there? Those yellow, they call them chevrons, those yellow uh, arrows. Okay, those are the area I was talking about. You can't even taxi on that. Boy, that thing's like right in the way to show you that, isn't it? There we go. You can't even taxi on those. Even though there's a taxiway up there, you can't even taxi on those. So just something to keep in mind. Come on, get on there. All right, let's get her lined up. This runway's not real long, 3,300 meters, I think, give or take a little bit. So we're gonna wanna take advantage of all that it has to offer come to a stop here and we'll run the engines up uh, to about 70 percent while holding the brakes and then we'll release brakes and we'll hit the toga button there's 60 there's 70 there release brakes toga they're coming up now all right let's hope those winds don't gust too much huh Keep her down the middle here as best we can. There's our 80 knots. Wind's trying to pull us to the left just a little, not too bad. You can see the uh, sp the speed tape's already bouncing around a little bit because of the gusty wind. Pull back, follow that flight director. Right to there, looks pretty good. Overshot it just a little. I always seem to overshoot it a little bit. Take out just a little trim. Positive rate of climb. Let's get the gear up now. Bringing a little bit of that trim back out. I mean, we set the trim according to the FMC, but apparently that's just a little too much. So you can see our speed's trying to bleed off there. We don't want that to happen. There we go. Looking good now. It's definitely bouncy a little bit out there, but that's all right. We expected that with the wind, right? Gusty winds are going to make for a bouncy departure. Beautiful scenery down there, huh? Don't let her climb too much. Keep that trim down just a little bit. We'll be making our right turn here shortly. I'm going to continue to hand fly it for now because I really like hand flying this airplane. You see the 20 on the tape there? I'll pop that up for you. The 20 on the tape, that's the minimum speed for flaps 20. So we want to be well above that before we reduce those flaps and since we're getting ready to make a turn here anyway let's go ahead and uh, just leave it where it's at start this turn you can see we've got to come all the way around there we want to watch out that we don't start to descend suddenly now this aircraft will right itself so if you let go of the yoke it'll it'll flat it'll level off and, and stop turning so we have to pay attention to our turn cordon or our turn indicator there on our artificial horizon flying strictly by the instruments trying to keep it right around 2,000 feet per minute climb rate not too high not too low it's a very tight turn we're making here that's all right this is this is a, a normal rate of turn for this aircraft if you watch the autopilot when it turns it turns at about the same rate climb just a little quicker okay here shortly right about now we'll start to roll out of the turn and I have all my gyros and all that stuff set, so I have to use the uh, rudders when I turn. Okay, and it tries to climb really quick as you come out of the turn. I'll explain that sometime if you want to understand how the basics of flight dynamics work. But 
In the meantime, let's go ahead and turn the track IR off so that we're not bouncing all over the place. LNAV VNAV are armed, so let's hit the autopilot. You can see it instantly took the LNAV, so here's what it's doing, and I'm letting it do this on purpose. It's going to try and circle around now. Why? It's because of this guy right here. So you click on ORL, replace vectors with that, and hit execute. Give it a second to reset itself. There it is. It's reset, and now it'll turn over here and go to ORL. Okay, we can go ahead and take uh, flaps to 10. Okay, you can see the five on the tape. If you can't see it, that's the five right there. We want to get past that before we go to flaps five. And when we do that, we're going to have to take command of the speed ourselves. And I'll show you why here in a second. You see the aircraft is coming on course on its own now. So you have to replace that those vectors. Otherwise, it's not. It's going to just circle around until uh, you do that. Okay, go to flaps five now. And as soon as we do that, you see the FMC speed at 255. We don't want that because we're below 10,000. So click on the tape and I bring it down to 245. Okay, so I just took command of the speed there. You got to pay attention to that. And we can leave We can leave it at flaps 5 because we're just barely above that minimum speed for flaps 1. And with the gusty winds and the speed sort of bouncing up and down, there's no point in even taking a risk. So until we get above 10,000 speed, uh, 10,000 feet and increase our speed, I'm going to leave the flaps there at flaps 5. I think that's the right way to go. Okay, we can take the uh, continuous ignition off now. We don't really need it on anymore. That's this one right here. The auto start will remain on throughout the flight. And let's see here. Do, 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 do. Let's go ahead and take a look at our after takeoff slash climb checklist. Now, most of this is really done above 10,000 feet, but for the sake of time, we're going to go ahead and go through it here. And uh, things that I have to do later, I'll just do them when the time comes. So landing and taxi lights will go off once we get above 10,000. Autopilot's already been set. We've already dealt with the speed issue. We'll turn it back over to the FMC when the time is appropriate. Uh, we don't need to worry about a handoff to approach control or anything like that. Uh, engine wing and anti-ice, it's still, uh, you can look right here, it's 21 degrees Celsius. We don't need uh, any anti-ice on. Altimeter, until we get above 18,000, they're going to stay where they're at. Uh, and the continuous ignition goes off and that's it until we get up to cruise altitude. So I'm going to go ahead and take this bird on up there and then when we get to cruise altitude we'll hop back on and take care of that checklist. In the meantime, the only thing left to do is take care of some of that obligatory elevator music. Alright, let's go ahead and take care of this cruise checklist really quick. <clears throat> Radio and ATC contact, that's uh, not going to apply to us today, obviously. Uh, it says, I've said this before, it says for uh, autopilot and FMC, check permanently. <laughs> I still find that amusing. It actually, uh, check regularly, I think is what it's supposed to say. Uh, we just want to keep an eye on them, keep an eye on our uh, fuel usage, make sure uh, we're not using more than we should be, keeping an eye on just all of our flight instruments. That's normal for any flight. Uh, we've already gone ahead and uh, switched off the two uh, outer cross feeds here for the uh, fuel 
that was already necessary and uh, but that's really it I and mean, that's your whole cruise checklist so until we reach the descent checklist there's nothing else to do so we're going to cruise along and i will see you guys uh, before top of descent all right so we're just about at top of drop here 10 miles to go first thing i want to do is go ahead and reset my mcp altitude here and i'm not going to take it all the way down yet i just want to get it set so that it starts descending without any issues and then we'll finish it up here in a second so we'll just roll it down a little ways here that'll get us started and let's go ahead and take care of this descent checklist uh, let's see airport information we've gone ahead and retrieved that already so we're good on that auto brakes need to be set those are down here uh, we're gonna leave them off we got lots of runway to work with I don't see any reason to use auto brakes uh, FMC let's go ahead and look down here so what you want to do is go to your departure arrival I've already set this up but you want to choose your arrival and then you want to insert it into the route so that you're good to go on that which we've already done so we're good there uh, anything else we don't have our VREF setting yet for flaps it, we could get it right now if you hit uh, initial reference it's going to be about the same, so we'll go ahead and take it just so that we don't forget later on. So 30 degrees, full flaps, 163 knots is going to be our landing speed. We're going to be cooking because we are heavy. And then we're already on VNAV, so it should start the descent automatically here uh, in just a couple miles. If you look right here, zoom it all the way in. Yeah, we're just a couple miles out. It'll start descending, so let's go ahead and finish rolling this all the way down to uh, our first uh, altitude restriction, which is 18,000 feet, actually. And there we go. And the descent begins. So that is it. Uh, there's nothing else for us to do right now. I'm going to go ahead and continue the descent. And I will see you guys back here not too long from now. It'll just be seconds for you. But not too long from now for the initial approach checklist. And then on in from there. All right, so our weather in Quito is conducive to the approach that I really want to fly, which is the ILS Z36 approach. And I'm going to tell you, you just got to look at this chart. You can see this 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 approach is no joke. Okay, uh, 18,000 feet is your minimum safe altitude right here, because you have to be 3,000 feet above this or nearest 2,000. Or I forget what it is, but anyway, so 18,000 feet at or above, we're going to skirt over the top of this guy. We got some clearance there, but where it really gets crazy is you get down here, you're 14,200 all the way around through this turn, and then descending from here, descending down to 10,500. Now, you see right here, this is 17,000 feet is your minimum safe altitude over here, which means uh, these mountains are right around 15,000 feet. So you can see that uh, we're actually going to be below the mountains as we come across here. It's, it's a really cool approach. Uh, the old airport, if I'm not mistaken, was over here and then you would actually come this way but uh, I'm not I'm not 100% certain based on this chart but the new airport as you can the new airport as you can see this approach is no joke so it's going to be a fun approach uh, our frequency is going to be 109.3 uh, we're going to have to take into account three different VORs the uh, Condor Cocha Condor Cocha VOR QIT right out here the uh, QSV VOR which is also our initial approach fix, and then the QNV VOR, which has to do with our missed approach. So let's take a look at our profile view here real quick. As you can see, we've got 4,098 meters of runway, uh, 45 meters wide, because we're at 7,910 feet above sea level. That's our touchdown zone. Okay, 3.2 degree glide slope, which means it's a slightly steeper approach. You will probably notice it on approach. And keep in mind also, and I'll probably say it again as we're flying it, for whatever reason, the aircraft does not like to recognize that we're actually approaching the airport. So it's going to keep saying, don't sink, don't sink, don't sink. It's really annoying, but we're going to have to deal with it. So it's about 1,100 foot per minute descent rate uh, as we're coming down here to cr before we cross the threshold. So <clears throat> going to be moving pretty quick there. Gradient doesn't matter because it's flat in FSX. Uh, so over here at QSV, that's this guy out here, initial approach fix, we're going to be 10,500 feet. And then at our final approach point, same altitude, that's where we want to intercept the glide slope. <coughs> Excuse me. And then begin our descent from there. Again, 3.2 degree glide slope down to our missed approach point. On missed approach, climb at 001 degrees. And 
when you get to QNV, at QNV, you must be at a minimum of 10,600 feet, and then begin a left turn direct to QIT and climb to 18,000 feet. What's that look like on the ground? So you're climbing out at 001 degrees, which is clearly just a tiny bit of a right turn here out towards the uh, QNV VOR, and you must be at or above 10,600 feet by the time you get there. As soon as you cross over, you're going to make a left turn direct to QIT, and then you're going to hold here with a left hand holding pattern. <coughs> and uh, yeah, that's your missed approach procedures. Weather's not too uh, too terrible. They do have a Cat 1 uh, DME approach there, and then localizer DME. We're just going to fly a standard ILS approach. ATIS on 118.9 or 0. Oh, let me just throw this out there. I still I need to take the time to look it up. I don't fully understand the difference between Cat 1 cat to all that stuff I need to look that up but yeah if you happen to know what this little section right here means and I'm sure somebody's mentioned it before uh, go ahead and let us know down there in the comments just for our own benefit but eventually I will take the time I promise to look that up and make sure that I understand what that part means a little bit better but anyway ADIS on 118.9 or tower on 118.1 we won't be talking to either and we won't be talking to ground and I think that's it so this is gonna be a lot of fun Let's go ahead and uh, let's dive in and let's make sure we don't kill ourselves, right? Let's try not to fly into a mountain. That's probably the idea here. All right, so we're just crossing QIT here, just about to 18,000 feet. We're going to go ahead and let this uh, continue descent on down to 14,200. Because we'll be past it. Well, we're going to be 18,000 or above here, right? Yep. No, we should be all right. I think we'll be all right. Be cutting it a little close maybe, but I think we'll be all right. So 14,200 is where I want to be for now. And I'm going to keep you guys with me pretty much for the whole approach because as you can see, this is going to be all kinds of fun. we got clouds and all kinds of stuff going on. If you look over here, there's the airport right there. That is the new airport. You must have the add-on scenery. And I did mention it earlier. Whoever did the scenery did a pretty darn good job. I mean, you look, it looks pretty darn good. And when we get down over here, you'll see that there's tons of trees there. It just looks fantastic. So anyway, uh, we'll go ahead and uh, make an adjustment to our altimeter here. It should be, oh, I got to double check it. Hold on a second. Should be 3021. So let's make sure that's what we got here. It's not even close to what we got. Of course not. That's some high pressure, huh? 3021. There we go. Not really worried about the other side. I don't really care. Uh, what else we got here? Um, we should already have our radio set. You go in here. Come on. Well, let me adjust here. Go to nav radio 109.30. So we're good on that. We're at 250 knots and we need to slow down. So let's bring it all the way down to 210 knots for now. And remember, we got that big turn coming up. That's why we got to start slowing down now. We don't have time to play around with this. So we're at flaps one right now. Uh, as the speed starts to come down, which it will, as the speed starts to come down, then we're going to want to go ahead and go to flaps. You know, we'll just start cycling through our flaps there, and uh, on we'll go. So, all of that being said, let's go ahead and take care of the initial approach checklist now. The ATIS has been obtained. The approach briefing has been accomplished. Decision height and MDA bugs are checked and set. Landing data, reference speed, we did that a little while ago. That is, that is set. Seatbelt selector, we never turned it off. ICUS recall, hit this button right here, see if any warnings pop up, none. Auto brake selector as required, we've chosen not to use the auto brakes. Uh, we can turn on landing lights now, we're above 10,000 MSL, I understand that. I always turn the taxi on too, but we're definitely below 10,000 AGL. So even though we'll get a warning through our A cars, I'm not too worried about it. Let's go ahead and bring in the next setting of flaps here. Um, I'll just put a little notation in there and when they review it they'll understand that uh, based on the airport I'm landing at there you go uh, flaps as required we'll continue to bring those down and then next of course will be the approach checklist which we'll do after we make the turn here and we can go ahead and bring in one more setting of flaps there and 210 knots and you can see we're already starting our turn so it happens pretty quick through here and I'm hoping that some of these clouds will clear out just a little bit because I really want you to see just how close we are to the terrain here I don't know if you're going to be able to see it. I can move around here a little bit. Let's see if it pops out over here. Now, I mean, you can just barely make out some terrain there, but we are absolutely right on top of the terrain, folks. Uh, I don't mind the clouds, but it would have been kind of nice if uh, 
if you could have seen the terrain, how close we are to it. Okay, uh, we're going to go ahead and let it continue all the way around to here. Now, uh, the first time I flew this, I wanted to straighten it out here, but there's a mountain right here. <laughs> you may remember from the approach chart. So we definitely want to cut inside here, so we're good on that. Uh, our landing speed is going to be 163 knots. That's our uh, that's our approach speed, or our V ref speed, and our approach speed obviously is five knots over that. Remember, we're going to keep getting told uh, uh, don't sink, don't sink, don't sink, which is really obnoxious, and I wish I could turn it off, but I can't. And that is because oh, uh, well, let's get this all the way down to 10,500. By the way, all the way down. There we go, 10,500. Um, I can't turn it off, but for some reason the airplane just doesn't seem to recognize that we are actually approaching the airport. So there's nothing I can do about it. Now as we finish swinging around here, I'm going to uh, click on the localizer switch here, but I want to make sure we get all the way around first. I don't want it to mess with anything. You can see that things go pretty quick on this approach. There's a lot going on really fast, and i got to be honest with you, in the real world, I would not want to do this without... Uh, Without visibility, you can just make out the ground there. Oh man. Oh, there you go. There's a good view right there. So we're actually below the top of this mountain already, and uh, this dips down here, but there's another mountain back there in those clouds, and we were pointed right at it as we came in. So, okay, 12,000 feet there. We're looking pretty good. Let's go ahead and bring the speed down to 180 knots now. Keep an eye on that. We can go ahead and lower our flaps, or our flaps. We can go ahead and lower our gear at this point. Hit the localizer switch. Still can't see any, hardly anything out there, but as you can clearly see, we are well below that mountain there, and that's why we have to come in from the side and then go that way. So we're a little left right now. The runway's out over there, and we're not going to be able to see much of anything. Okay, gear's coming down. Flaps can come in. There's our flaps 20. Uh, I'm sorry, that took us straight to flaps 25. Let's let that settle for a second because the engines are going to have to fight to keep up here for a second. So you can see very close to the terrain on this entire approach. I really like it. Look at all the trees over here. They did an, they did an amazing job on this scenery here. This is free, guys. It looks really good. Lots of hand place auto gen in there. Tons of trees. It just looks fantastic. Look at the clouds sitting right on the mountain there. Really cool. I like it. All right, looks like it's going to clear up for us just a little bit here. There's our runway right there. Let's go ahead and get track IR turned on. Make sure that we arm the spoilers. They are armed at this point. We can uh, go ahead and bring it all the way down to 163 knots now, maybe. There we go. We've locked onto the localizer, so we want to hit the approach switch now so that it grabs the glide slope, which it'll do here momentarily. And we can go to full flaps. Waiting on that glide slope. As soon as it kicks in, we're going to go ahead and take care of this uh, approach checklist. Turn that track IR off for a second. It's going to grab the glide slope here in just a second. You can see the engine's got to fight a little to keep up. <clears throat> Very high altitude. Come on, glide slope. So you got to watch it close. Boy, those engines are revving up, aren't they? There's the glide slope right there. Okay, we're good. So let's go ahead and take care of the approach checklist at this point. Flaps are set, gear is down and locked, speed brake is armed, ILS and localizer are both captured. Uh, we don't have to worry about handoff approach to tower, throttles are good right now, thrust reversers once we touch down, that is your landing checklist ladies and gentlemen, and I still don't have eyes on the runway, so that means uh, we're on autopilot until <laughs> we can see the runway. Now I do like doing this landing, uh, like I said I've already made a few trips down here and I, I, I like it. So I'm hoping that uh, we'll be able to see soon enough. You know what I can do though, is I can go ahead and turn the auto throttle off and I can take over the throttles myself. Okay, keeping an eye on that speed right now and we're letting the autopilot fly the glide slope on its own. We're actually just a little slow here. Boy, we can't see nothing. I can just barely make out the runway right now. we got a bit of crosswind going on. Bring that throttle back just a little now. Remember, it's a steeper glide slope, too. 
Okay. We get better visibility on that runway and I'll hand fly it in because I very much prefer hand flying. This aircraft will auto land. It will auto land. Okay, I can see the runway good enough now. Hopefully it doesn't obscure. So, autopilot off. I have control of the aircraft now. Looking pretty good. Just a little more throttle in there. See our descent rate? 1,100 feet per minute. See, there's a don't sink now. Don't sink. 300. Don't sink. Don't sink. Well, I have to sink. Don't sink. We're gonna end up floating it. I can tell. Don't Ooh, sink. That wind change, or is that just me? Don't sink. Light float. Don't sink. Looking good. Light float. Yeah, yeah, just don't a touch sink. low. Light float. There we go. Don't sink. All right, shut up, guys. <laughs> One hundred. Don't sink. One hundred. Don't sink. Fifty. Forty. Don't sink. Twenty. Thirty. Don't sink. Ten. Bottles back. Twenty. Come on. Oh, I didn't even do anything, and it floated. <laughs> All right, bring in the reverse. You can see it's a very, very long runway. We floated just a little bit there, but not real bad. And that, that wasn't even me. I, I barely touched that yoke. Let's see if we can make this exit here. What's our ground speed? No, nah, we ain't making this exit. All right. Alright, so we had to take it all the way to the end of the runway. That's alright. Just slow it down a little bit more here. We don't want to be turning too fast. Looking pretty good there. Bring the throttles back in just a little bit so we don't come to a complete stop here. Take it off the runway and then we'll take care of the after landing checklist. I think we have an after landing. I can never remember. I can fly in so many different aircraft. Come on around, baby. Looking good. Let's go ahead and get those landing lights off. Jerking around a little bit there, huh? There we go. Looking good there. Yes, I know auto throttles dis auto throttle is disconnected, as it should be. Alright. Start our turn over here. around the corner there a little bit and once I get her lined up here we'll take care of the after landing stuff and then I'll taxi it in and we can shut it down all right let's turn off the track IR now and what do we got here uh, just a taxi checklist uh, which really constitutes after landing I suppose so we want to take our transponder to standby that includes the TCAS over here there we go 
Uh, we don't need to worry about a hand off the tower. We already know which taxiways we're taking. Flaps are already set to zero. I did that shortly after landing. And just double check and make sure that the spoilers are down. Uh, auto brakes off. That's already done, of course. We're drifting a little bit here. It's kind of hard to do this while you're taxiing. Uh, landing lights are already off. Strobe light can come off at this point, which is this one here. Strobe lights off. There we go. Looking pretty good so far. Uh, and start the APU. And that's uh, that's so that we can have all our power when we're ready to shut down engines. So that's it for the uh, after landing checklist. The next will be the parking and shutdown checklist. So uh, let me go ahead and taxi this thing in, and I will see you guys back here in just a minute. All right, we found us a parking space here, so let's go ahead and take care of this uh, parking checklist. Parking brake is set. We'll just double check that. There it is. <coughs> Uh, we don't need to worry about ATC contact. APU generators 1 and 2 need to come on. There's one. There's two. They'll pop on here in a second. APU bleed needs to go on. That's this guy way out over here. There it goes. Engine bleeds all need to go off. One. Come on. One, two, three, and four. There we go. Engine hydraulic pumps need to go off. Uh, that's these guys, right? Yeah. One, two, three. Uh, and four, I guess. Shouldn't that one go to auxiliary now? Fuel control switches go to cutoff. One, two, three, and four. Good there. Seat belt signs can come off. Not that it matters because it's nobody but us. We can unlock the door there. We're not going to open the doors there. Uh, and that's going to take us right into the shutdown checklist. So ground power, we're, we don't need that. APU bleed only goes off if ground power is available. It's not. Yaw dampers need to come off. That's these two up over here. Uh, where are we at? Hydraulic demand switches all need to go off. That was these guys right here. Hydraulic demand. Which was the one? Uh, engine hydraulic pumps off. I must be missing something. Hydraulic pumps. Oh, these are, these are the demand here, right? Hydraulic pumps. Demand. I think. <laughs> I'm not 100% certain. If you guys know, please let me know. But let's go ahead and turn these off for now. Okay, we're good there. Continuous ignition needs to go off. Uh, I guess that was supposed to come on for landing, but I didn't see it on the checklist. Auto start needs to go off. There we go. IRS systems 1 through 3 off. Click those twice. Boy, that's a fickle position there. Got to be just right. There we go. Those are off. Left and right utilities both go off. Fuel pumps all can come off. Off, 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 off. It's a lot of fuel pumps, isn't it? There we go. All the fuel pumps are off. Cross feeds on. It says all cross feeds on. Okay, on. And these are cross feeds, right? Nope, that's center. These are the other cross feeds here. Are these cross feeds? Nope, those are just more pumps. Window heat says on. Which, am I? do I have that right? Nope, window heat is off. Boy, it's, uh, <laughs> they're almost not lined up on here. Window heat can go off. Engine wing anti-ice off, aft cargo heat um, is off. <coughs> I don't think we ever turned that on, did we? Uh, no, we never turned that on. Uh, upper, trim air, upper, lower recirc, and gaspers all go off. Packs one through three can go off. Three. Uh, let's see, isolate, <coughs> excuse me, left and right isolation switches go off. Generator control switches go off, which is these here. And what's next? Long checklist, isn't it? TCAS is already on standby. <coughs> uh, APU bleed can go off now. APU gens one and two go off. That one, I thought that one was on. I guess I didn't click it right. Anyway, APU can go off now. Uh, all external lights off. Battery off, which is last, of course. And we are done. That is the engine, sh or the uh, yeah, the aircraft shutdown procedure for the PMDG 747. So, all of that being said, here we are in beautiful Quito, Ecuador. And even though I know it's virtual, I guess we could say that we hope that this uh, that the supplies would help the victims. Of course, that's not real. We understand that. <clears throat> but again, uh, I do want to finish up this flight by saying, you know, I, I really hope that uh, folks are doing okay down there. I know a lot of people died and. Um, you know, it's, it's going to take a long time for them to recover. So thoughts and prayers definitely continue to go out to them. 
In the meantime, uh, that's going to wrap it up for this flight, folks. Uh, other than the circumstances as to why uh, National is doing this particular run, I did enjoy the flight. I hope that you did too. If you haven't had an opportunity, please go ahead and click on that subscribe button down there. We are well over a thousand now. We're at about a thousand and seventy. I do appreciate every one of my subscribers. You guys are fantastic. Uh, and I just want you to know that uh, it means a great deal to me. All of the support and stuff that I get from you guys is awesome. So keep it up. If you haven't done so, like us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter. There's not a whole lot of folks over there yet. So until I get a decent following going on on those two, you probably won't see much going on there. That's okay. Uh, the main thing we want to do, obviously, is uh, spend our time on here doing some flying. So we're going to hop back over to the website. To, oh, almost forgot about A-Cars again. There we go. A-Cars. Finish the flight. Uh, da -da, file the pie rep. Any day. There we go. It's been filed. It's refreshed. We're good. We can close that out now. Now we'll hop on over to the website, uh, take a look over there, see how things are going, and then we will wrap this one up. All right, so quick down and dirty. Uh, the flight's not going to show up in here yet because it has to be approved, but you can see it is no longer in our bid list. So it is done, sir, done. Um, I will probably do a few more flights down there just because I like the reason that we're doing them. I think uh, in the real world, I tell you, in the real world, if I could fly for national airlines and do those those types of flights, I'll tell you what, I would really be thrilled to do that. I'd, I'd be very happy to be a part of something like that. So uh, in the meantime, there's nothing else to do here. I suppose the question is, somebody mentioned in uh, one of my videos a flight across the Atlantic um to nationals base over there I forget where it's at off the top of my head anyway uh for the subscriber that mentioned it please go ahead and put it back in the comments again I'd, I'd like to look at doing that even if there isn't a flight that's already set up to do that i can create a flight that will fly over there so if that's something you're interested in go ahead and put it down there we can look at doing that for a future flight for national virtual cargo but until next time as always, keep the blue side up unless conducting aerobatics, which if you're doing that in a 747 is probably not a good idea. And I will see you folks next time.